And I want to start in verse 4, and we're going to go through as much as we will have time for. It starts off in verse 4, it says, Shoma, and literally it's pronounced, pronounced Shoma. Shoma, just FYI. Shoma, Israel, Adonai Elohinu, Adonai Echad. Here, Israel. Adonai our God, Adonai is one. And literally, Shoma means to hear intelligently, often with implication of attention, obedience, to listen. Everyone say to listen. To listen. Say it again. To listen. To listen. One more time. To listen. to listen. See, that's Hebrew too. How do you repeat the message to go from here into your heart? Listen. The Heavenly Father is speaking to us all of the time. The problem is not in Him not speaking. The problem is in us not hearing not listening. I had a woman come to me one time and she said, why is it every time I go to the shower, I hear the Father speaking to me. I hear the Spirit speaking to my heart. And I said, my guess is that's probably the only time you shut things down enough in your life Guys, he speaks all the time. You know, there are some believers that, uh, I don't know what kind of believers they are, but you tell them that, they just think that you ought to be locked up in a rubber room. What do you mean the Spirit speaks to you? What do you mean? He speaks to all of us through his word, yes, but he speaks to us in our spirit as well. I can't understand or I can't really relate with people that say they never hear his voice. He's speaking all the time. Most of the time, he's speaking what our flesh doesn't want to hear. Exactly. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Come on, guys. Wherever there's a part of you wanting to do something, you hear that small, still voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Well, no, you know, I really don't want to do that. <laughs> Come on, guys. That's every day. Amen? Amen. Amen? His spirit is speaking to his people all the time. Yeshua said, my sheep hear my voice. Shema. They shema my voice. They hear it. They listen to it. And they obey it. Shema. To listen. Now, how many of you know that we can hear, but hearing isn't always listening? You don't believe that, married ladies? You would probably testify, sometimes us men, hear but don't listen. <laughs> All the women said. Amen. All the men said, boo, hiss, whoosh. <laughs> listen, we get accused of that all the time. But sometimes it's true, we hear but we don't listen. But all of us, I think, have to find that place in our heart, in our life, where we're tuning in to his voice. I liken it to a radio. Now, I know there's a lot of young people here, but back in my day, when I was a teenager, we had radios with knobs. <laughs> and you had to turn the knob to adjust the frequency so you can hear what you wanted to listen to. If you went too far to the left, especially in Houston late at night, you heard it sound like really excited Mexican music. <laughs> if you went too far to the right, I mean, you would hear something else. You had to adjust just to the right frequency. Listen to me, and this is really, really important. I'm off my notes, but listen to me. There are all manner of voices speaking to us throughout the day. There's voices from media. There's voices from friends and family. There's Facebook voices and social media voices. There's school voices, young people. There's voices coming at you all the time. We need to learn to be still, to tune in to his voice and to Shema. Everybody say Shema. Shema. Shema, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. Listen, O Israel. Now, Shema 
Israel. Hear Israel, Adonai our God, Adonai is one. Everyone say one. One. Now, you may not know this, but the Hebrew language has no numbers. There are no numbers in Hebrew. There are words, but there are no numbers. Now, that may not make sense to you, but when a number word is used, it only has a meaning. And this here, one, that we translate in English, is literally in Hebrew, ekad. It's a root from akad, which means properly united. That is one. The root means unified. Everyone say unified. Unified. Now listen to me. We, dear Jewish people, my ancestors, many of whom have not yet come to the saving grace of Yeshua HaMashiach, do not understand the Trinity. They think of one in language. Now, I'm not talking about the Orthodox Jews who know Hebrew and know the, the, the Torah. And I'm talking about the average agnostic, atheistic Jewish person. When they hear one, they think just one. And as a uh, 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 seeker, I wasn't a believer yet, I remember one of the difficult things I had that night that I gave my heart to Yeshua that I brought out to the fathers, how can I serve you and love you and also love Yeshua and also the spirit, I mean, in my mind, before I had the blinders lifted off of my heart, I thought there was three different gods. I was confused. I was confused. And it's really simple. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, one in unity. How many of you married folks, again, I'm using this married folks as an example. The scripture says when we are married, the two become what? One. Two become one. What's that word mean? One, unified. One in unity. Amen? Pretty simple. Jews have a difficult time with the Trinity. <clears throat> Shema, by the way, is pronounced Shema, as I had explained earlier. So what is it to Shema? Verse 5, and you are to love. Everyone say to love. To love. Okay, hang on. Let's not be like Greeks here. Let's have some passion. <laughs> Let's have it come from where? Not our head, but come from where? Our heart. But why are you always trying to get things from our heart? Because, listen to me, if you love him with all of your heart, your head's going to follow. Yes. But you can follow him with your head and your heart is nowhere near him. That's the Greek way. I know it's hard to stop being Greeks. We all live in the Western civilization. Croatia is Western. Isn't it? It used to be part of not Eastern Europe, right? I think that the Eastern civilization sometimes has an easier grasp of being able to understand the pictures of what Scripture is saying. And to love, everyone say to love. To love. There you go, it's better. To love, I'd annoy your God with all your heart. Everyone say all. all. How much is all? All. All is 100%. It's everything. As I like to say, all in Hebrew means all. <laughs> you can extend it out. It's as much as you can think of. You see, in America, we want just enough of Yeshua to make us comfortable. Just enough to make us think that we're going to sneak into those pearly gates. Not enough to bother us. Not enough to change us. Not enough to convict us. Not enough to cause us to be like a rabbi. Why do I teach with passion? Because it's in here. It's in my heart. He wants us to love him with all of our heart. Not just know the words with our head. But to follow him with a passion in our heart. All of your heart. Affection for the Father with all. All is everything. Nothing held back. Everyone say nothing. Nothing, nothing held back. 
Now, how many of you have affection for the Father? Amen. He wants us to have affection for him with all of our heart. I know some of us, I mean, even simple things like praise, I'll never forget the very first time I ever lifted my hand. It was the hardest, most difficult thing in the world. I was just listening and wanting to worship, and that hand was just... <laughs> I just wouldn't go. Listen, it's not about the outward, but it's about the heart. Amen. But you see, the outward's a reflection. Do you ever have somebody say, well, you know, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. And the scripture says, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Yeah. You want to know what's in somebody's heart? Listen to their mouth for a few minutes. <laughs> That's what's in their heart. You ever bang yourself with a hammer or hurt yourself? <coughs> Don't answer, but think about it. What's the first thing that comes out of your mouth? Oh, praise you, Father. Or is it something else? I'll tell you what. In times of absolute momentary agony, you find out real quick what's in your heart. Amen. Or oh, me. Been there. Listen to me. All your heart. This is the center of your will and affection. What does that mean, the center of your will? If he wants you and I to love him with all of our heart, that means to determine that his will is to be our will. Amen. Amen. And that is not easy. That is every day dying to yourself. Because how many of you know that our will doesn't always want to go? You say, well, my will always does. Well, yeah, until the first time he asks you something you don't want to do. Which free probably tonight or tomorrow. Yeah. Go love that person that you don't love. Go talk to that person that you have hard feelings against. Go apologize even though you feel like you were in the right. That flesh is at work in all of us, isn't it? I'll be so glad when these bodies of flesh are transformed. See, some people are looking for the rapture for it or perhaps for eternity, we're going to get there one day or in another. Amen? Amen? But transformed bodies, man, this is a body of death. Even though our spirit's been redeemed, we still wrestle against the flesh all the time. Amen? Amen. I know some of you are more spiritual. Maybe you're, you've, you've been just, your flesh is just all following after your spirit. But I still wrestle with these things. All of us do. Who can free me from this body of death, Paul said. Praise me to God for Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen? Amen. He has freed us from this body of death, this corruption that follows us around. I just got to tell you this story now that I shared that scripture. I shared this in Sunday school one time in a teaching class, and it really grossed Claudia out. So it's even more a reason to share it again. <laughs> this is what it is. That body of death, when the Romans wanted to really torture somebody good, which they had all manner of evil things they could do to people, they would sometimes take a corpse, and they would take that corpse and they would drape it around the person on their back and make them, they would tie it to them and make them carry that corpse around with them all the time until eventually that death and corruption began to eat into their living flesh until they themselves finally died. They're pretty graphic. So when Paul, the apostle, said, who can free me from this corruption of death? You just can imagine that flesh of ours just hanging over tied to our spirit, trying to wear us down every day. Then he goes on and says, praise be to God for Yeshua HaMashiach. He has freed me from this body of death. Someone say amen. amen. All your heart, the center of your will and affection, Yeshua said, nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will, Mark 14, 36. Remember, Yeshua was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And the rabbi was praying and crying out to the Father because he knew what was coming up. And he said, Father, if it be possible, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what? What you will and you desire. Listen to me. None of us have been asked to drink the same exact cup that you should have drank. But we all have a cup to drink. 
this message of come to Yeshua and your life's going to be just uh, peaches and ice cream is the most absurd, ridiculous Western thing I've ever heard in my life. Come to Yeshua, be grateful for eternal salvation, and then do his will wherever he leads you. What he does promise you is he promises to never leave you, to never forsake you. He promises to be with you and to be a friend who sticks closer than a brother. But all these people that are promising worldly stuff, man, that is so contrary to the good news that I know and to the Torah. Amen? Amen. Now, have I ever been without a meal? Not unless I chose to fast. He has always provided my every need. Have I ever been without a roof over my head? He has always provided my every need. He promises us that. Amen. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. To love is to have affection for. Someone say amen. amen. We want to have affection for him. Next part of the Shema. With all of your being. What is it to Shema? With all of your being, this is nefesh. To be breathed upon a breathing creature. King James Version translates this word nefesh as soul. But you see, most people, they read that, they're like, love God with all your soul. And they're like, oh, yay, but they have no idea what, what it really means. What's it mean? It means he's breathed on you. He's breathed in you. Remember in Genesis, he took the clay and formed it, called him Adam, and he breathed into him the breath of life. And then you and I, while we were lost in corruption, we gave our hearts to Yeshua HaMashiach, and we came alive, and suddenly the Ruach, the Spirit, again breathed life into us. We're to love him with all of this being, all that he has done in us is so that we can love him. You and I have been created to glorify him and to worship him and to love him. To the world, they can't understand that. They're out there killing themselves to gain more toys so that he who dies with the most, I guess they think, wins. It's amazing, these guys with billions, it's like, how many more billions do you need? I mean, it just, I've done a lot of funerals, not as many as weddings. I mean, I've done more weddings, but I've done enough funerals to know that even you Gentiles, and I'm not knocking you, I'm married to one, but even though we, you Gentiles, you like to cushion your caskets. You ever see some of these caskets? I mean, they're, they're upholstered. They're cushioned with pillows. You're not there. <laughs> FYI. <laughs> I'm serious. You are not there. We Jews, you dump us in a pine box, grab the staple gun, call it a day. We're ready to go home. You follow me? We're not taking this stuff with us. And I'm not against stuff. What I am is we love stuff more than we love him. We need to stop loving this stuff and get back to loving the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our soul, everything that he's breathed into our life. Giving of oneself completely, nothing held back. All of our life, all that we are and all that we ever hope to be. Man, that sounds like everything. <laughs> what do we say all day? Everything. All means all. <laughs> All your resources. Now, you know, somebody asked me, what's your favorite translation of the Bible? I don't have one. Why? Because I've found that they all mess up something. <laughs> Not that I'm perfect, but I'm just telling you, when I look at the original language, some get it right, some get it wrong. Then you go a different, well, that one got it right, that one got it, and then it's reverse. I don't know how in the world the complete Jewish Bible came up with the word resources from this. Now, they're the only translation that came up resources. All the other ones were a little more accurate, actually. So on this one, but it says resources. Okay, let's go with the Hebrew. Mahod, I love this. I want you to see a revelation of spirit, give me. Mahod from the root ood, which is a poker for gathering, 
and turning embers. What? All of your strength, King James says, or all of your might. Remember, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Amen. With all of your soul and with all your what? Might. Strength or might. Some translations say strength or might. But I'm telling you that that word is literally, the root of it is a poker used for turning embers. I'd meditate on this. Listen to me. How many of you have a fireplace in your home? A couple of y'all. Uh, we have a fireplace. Let me tell you, my son, a scout, is great at stoking a fire. And we've got a poker sitting next to the fireplace. And he'll get in there sometimes, and you just got to kind of move the embers around so that the fire will kick back up. Mahod literally is vehemently, by implication, holy. So the Spirit of God here is trying to tell us that the way we shema is to love God with all of our heart, to love him with all of our soul, and to love him with all of our strength, and that that strength, literally, somehow, there's this, this poker inside of us turning embers. Who is that poker in us turning those embers, guys? The Ruach HaKodesh, the Spirit of the living God, is in us helping us. You see, without the Spirit, you and I can't do this. The Jews have tried, they failed. You can't do it. But when you love Yeshua and your life has been changed and you've repented of your sin and given your whole heart to Him and His Ruach, His Spirit is coming to your heart. Now you have that poker in you churning up those embers. Every time, how many of you have ever thought that you gave all your strength to the Father and suddenly He showed you you had a lot more you could give? <laughs> Amen? What do you do? Is that poker in you churning up those embers? Sometimes it hurts. Oh, you're digging deep, Father, you're digging deep, Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Matthew 3, verse 11 through 12. Now, I love this because keep in mind, now I'm going to this verse because I want you to keep in mind, we're talking about that poker turning up, churning up those embers in our life so we can love him with all of our strength. And I want you to look at this in Matthew 3, verses 11 and 12. It's true, this is John the Baptist, Johan, he's saying it's true that I'm immersing you in water so that you might turn from sin to God, but the one coming after me is more powerful than I. I'm not worthy to even carry his sandals. And he will immerse you in the rock, HaKodesh, and in what? Fire. And in what? Fire. Fire. One more time. Fire. 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 He will immerse you in the rock, HaKodesh, in the Holy Spirit, and in Should we be like, woohoo, fire? Or are we like, eh, fire? Yeah. Fire doesn't always really sound so good. Now, verse 12, this is a fascinating scripture, and then we're going to go back to the fire. But keep that fire and being immersed in the spirit and immersed in fire. Then, verse 12, it says, He has with him his winnowing fork, and he will clear out his threshing floor gathering his wheat into the barn, but burning up the straw with unquenchable fire. You see, a winnowing fork, guys, in the days of old, they would take the wheat and they would literally go to a place where there'd be a breeze that was blowing, and they would toss it up into the air, and the chaff would separate, be blown by the wind, and the wheat would fall. The wheat is what you eat. You cannot eat the chaff. The chaff was good for one thing, to be gathered up and to be what? Burned. Now, when he immerses us in their Ruach HaKodesh with the spirit and with fire, listen to me, he wants to burn up all the chaff in our life. That's awesome. All the chaff. Remember that poker in our hearts? Churning up the embers? He wants to burn that chaff out of our life so that nothing is left but the wheat. Yes, sir. Why? Who is the wheat? He is the wheat. I must decrease, John the Baptist, Johan said, so that Yeshua HaMashiach can increase. 
And unless we're allowing the fire of the Ruach HaKodesh, the fire of his Holy Spirit, to burn up the chaff in our life, you're always going to be walking around, piece of wheat stuck in a shell, never following your rabbi, never looking like Messiah. And people, when they look at you, you're going to look like everybody else. And that is a shame. Because we are a chosen people, a holy nation, called out of every kindred, tongue, and nation to be a son and a daughter of the Most High. What a beautiful call. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. I have about two hours more, but we're limited to 30 minutes on the timer lucky for you on the video, or else I have to do it in several parts. But listen to me. I want you to hear tonight, if nothing else, that he really does want us to love him with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our strength. And we've got to allow the Spirit of God, his holy poker, to stir up those embers in our hearts and to burn the chaff out of our life. Amen? And I would encourage you in your own study time this week to go home and to read through the rest of the Shema and see how it relates to your family and to raising your children. And I mean, there's so much there, it's just impossible to cover in a short amount of time. Do you follow me? Okay. Let's all come together around the table.